Chapter 41 41, I Want It All You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 41 I Want It All Translator Dragon Boat Translation Editor Dragon Boat Translation, he doesn't look like Big Sister, but I heard that he has a good relationship with her. Gu Chiner said. Gu Jinyue was deeply impressed by Gu Xiaonan, so she had someone draw a portrait of him with the intention to settle the score. Gu Chiner requested a copy of the portrait and handed it to Wang Shi. Wang Shi took the portrait and looked down at it. The child in the painting looked good, but there was not a single resemblance to Gu Qingwan. What a pity. It would have been even better if it were the child from five years ago. Wang Shi sighed inwardly and rubbed her eyes. I'm feeling a bit tired. You may go back. After Gu Qinar saw Wang Shi take the portrait, she respectfully stood up and said, Yes, mother. Qinar takes her leave. Once Gu Qinar left, Wang Shi called her trusted aide over. Investigate the whereabouts of this boy and find a way to capture him. Not long after Gu Qinghuan left the Jun residence, she sensed that someone was following her. She smiled coldly and walked straight to a crowded place. A man followed behind her at a discreet distance. Gu Qinghuan walked into the Hundred Herb Hall. Master, why are you here? When the shopkeeper sitting behind the counter saw Gu Qinghuan, his eyes lit up and he quickly stood up to welcome her. You stay inside. Let's cut to the chase, Gu Qingwan said. The shopkeeper became serious. Please speak, I'm listening. I'm being followed. I need your cooperation to stage a little act later, not long after, a man walked into the Hundred Herb Hall, casually scanning the surroundings. Seeing Gu Qingwan engaged in conversation with the shopkeeper, he walked to a nearby location, pretending to browse a shelf while keeping his ears open. Could you please expedite things, Mr. Wang? I'm in urgent need. If the Xingxuan pill isn't available, it could seriously hinder my important matters. The shopkeeper smiled and assured her, once the stock arrives, I'll immediately notify you, Mississippi. Thank you, Mr. Wang. Gu Qingwan expressed her gratitude and placed a silver note on the table. I'll pay you in advance. Mr. Wang, Please ensure the Xingxuan pill isn't sold to anyone else. It holds great importance to me, dot, this, the shopkeeper hesitated. If you don't accept it, I'll just stay here and not leave, so you won't sell the pill to someone else, Gu Qingwan insisted. The shopkeeper sighed helplessly. All right, I'll take the money first. Once the Xingxuan pill arrives, I'll notify you immediately. Gu Qingwan breathed a sigh of relief. Thank you, shopkeeper. As if she had resolved a major issue, she left with light steps. Once Gu Qingwan stepped outside of the Hundred Herb Hall, the smile in her eyes faded, replaced by a chilling sharpness that flashed momentarily. Before long, the man also emerged from the shop, glanced around, and hurriedly made his way towards the June residence. In the main courtyard, Gu Zicheng slapped his thigh. I knew that girl's cultivation progress was suspicious. Otherwise, how could she, a useless waste, become stronger than me in just five years? Let's go to the Hundred Herb Hall. The shopkeeper sat behind the counter, pondering which person might be causing trouble for his master when suddenly, a figure appeared before him. He looked up and saw the head of the Gu family. What brings the head of the Gu family here? I apologize for not extending a proper welcome, the shopkeeper greeted with a smile. If it weren't for running a business, he wouldn't have put on a pleasant face for this person who mistreated his master. Mr. Wang, I heard that my eldest daughter placed an order for some pills with you. I expect you to deliver them directly to me. The head of the Gu family demanded. The shopkeeper's eyelid twitched. So, his master intended to deceive this head of the Gu family. That was not surprising. Excitement welled up inside him, but he maintained a hesitant expression. That might not be appropriate. After all, our customer is Miss Gu. Chapter 42 42, 
tricking you without negotiation you are listening at novelfull.audio. Chapter 42 Tricking you without negotiation translator Dragon Boat Translation Editor Dragon Boat Translation, what's inappropriate about it? I am her father. Her belongings are mine. Her money is mine too. What business does a pill seller like you have meddling in this? Gu Zhiqing exclaimed. The shopkeeper took a deep breath. This old man had no shame, did he? He didn't even consider how he treated his own daughter and had the audacity to say such things. It was like the logic of a thief. But then again, Gu Zhicheng had long lost his sense of shame. Otherwise, he wouldn't have done so many unethical things. As he thought about the distressing incidents his master had faced in the Gu family, his expression turned cold instantly. I apologize, but whoever pays at our hundred herb hall gets the pills. If the head of the Gu family wants them, he can ask Miss Gu directly. Gu Zhicheng was speechless as he glared at the shopkeeper with anger and embarrassment. However, the pills sold at the Hundred Herb Hall had excellent quality and were highly popular. Moreover, the Hundred Herb Hall was rumored to occasionally possess rare pills that couldn't be found elsewhere, leading many to speculate about their connection with the Island of No Return. Given these circumstances, most people wouldn't dare to offend anyone from the Hundred Herb Hall. Dnav Om Gu Zhicheng realized this and didn't dare to forcefully confront Mr. Wang, the shopkeeper. He took a deep breath, suppressed his anger, and forced a smile. Why are you being so stubborn, Mr. Wang? The Gu family is thriving, and in the future, my daughter will still depend on me. If you give me the pills, she won't dare to say anything. Shopkeeper Wang remained unmoved. Fine, if you won't give me the pills, can you at least tell me which pills she purchased? Gu Zhicheng asked. One million tails, shopkeeper Wang replied. What? Gu Zhicheng was stunned. Shopkeeper Wang continued, one million tails for a piece of information. Gu Zhicheng's expression instantly changed. That is daylight robbery. Even the pavilion of myriad knowledge sells a piece of information for millions. What's one million to you? Shopkeeper Wang sneered coldly. He took out a feather duster from somewhere and swept it across the counter with a broad motion, narrowly avoiding Gu Zhicheng. If the head of the Gu family isn't here to buy pills, please step aside. Gu Zhicheng took two steps back, his temple veins bulging. Shopkeeper Wang, don't think you can look down on others just because the Hundred Herb Hall has some connection with the Island of No Return. Do you even understand the consequences of offending the Gu family? Shopkeeper Wang paused in surprise and asked, Is the head of the Gu family threatening me? Perhaps we should let everyone present judge the situation. He stretched his neck, about to call over other customers. Gu Zhicheng didn't want to escalate the situation. He lowered his voice and shouted, Shut up. If things spiraled out of control and Gu Qingwan became aware, how could he deceive her? It appears that the head of the Gu family is fully aware of their own dishonorable actions. Shopkeeper Wang sneered, lowering his head to continue wiping the counter. Gu Zhicheng seethed with anger but had no choice but to contain himself. After a brief moment of standing still, he reluctantly asked, Fine, let's go with one million tails. Now, tell me, what pills did Gu Qingwan purchase from you? Shopkeeper Wang extended his hand. Where's the money? Gu Zhicheng glared at him. L didn't bring that much money with me. Then come back when the head of the Gu family has the money, shopkeeper Wang said dismissively, turning his head away. You old geezer, once I've dealt with Gu Qingwan, I'll come and deal with you. Gu Zhicheng cursed inside before he called for his attendant to go and retrieve the gold notes. Shopkeeper Wang interjected, hold on. The attendant paused and turned back, looking at shopkeeper Wang with confusion. With a sly smile, shopkeeper Wang gave a friendly reminder, it's one million tails of gold, make sure you don't bring any less. Damn! One million tails of gold! Upon hearing this amount, Gu Zhicheng was on the verge of erupting in a string of curses. 
suppressing his anger and facing shopkeeper Wang's smiling face, Gu Zhicheng forced a smile and said, Shopkeeper Wang, don't push your luck. Consider whether it's truly worth that price. For me, that piece of information may not be worth much, but clearly it holds a different value for the head of the Gu family, shopkeeper Wang chuckled, almost as if he had the words, TN clearly trying to deceive you, written on his face. Chapter 43 43, The Pills Personally Refined by the Lord of the Island of No Return You are listening at novelfull.audio Chapter 43 The Pills Personally Refined by the Lord of the Island of No Return Translator Dragon Boat Translation Editor Dragon Boat Translation Gu Zhicheng knew that he couldn't do anything to shopkeeper Wang, so he ordered his attendant to go back and get the money. In less than an hour, his attendant arrived on horseback. Gu Zhicheng slammed the money on the table. Can you tell me now? Shopkeeper Wang took the money from under his palm, examined them, and immediately smiled. Of course. Miss Gu has reserved the Zhengshuan pill with Gu Zhicheng's heart skipped a beat. What is the Zhengshuan pill? And how many are there? The Zhengshuan pill is a spirit pill personally refined by the Lord of the Island of No Return. Only ten are produced each year, and they have all been reserved by Miss Gu. Gu Zhicheng's pupils contracted, and his heartbeat involuntarily quickened. The pills personally refined by the Lord of the Island of No Return. Could they be ordinary pills? No wonder Gu Qingluan's cultivation advanced so rapidly. If he could have the pills personally refined by the Lord of the Island of No Return, he could also. Shopkeeper Wang, I want the Zhengshuan pill. I will pay double of whatever price Gu Qingluan paid. Not for sale, shopkeeper Wang immediately rejected without hesitation. Triple the price. Head of the Gu family, please leave. Ten times the price. I'll buy them. Gu Zhicheng's eyes turned red. Shopkeeper Wang was tempted by the offer, but recalling his master's instructions, he firmly refused. Seeing that he couldn't persuade him no matter what, Gu Zhicheng left with a dark and gloomy expression. Outside, the attendant asked, Master, will you just let this matter slide? Let this matter slide. Gu Zhicheng sneered. Impossible. If Hundred Herb Hall doesn't want to make that money, I'll find another way. As shopkeeper Wang watched Gu Zhicheng leave, he couldn't help but sigh, impressive, the master truly has remarkable foresight. One million tails, this Gu family head is willing to spend. It was unfortunate that his master had instructed him only to sell information and not the Zhengshuan pill. Otherwise, they could have taken advantage of Gu Zhicheng even more. He secretly contacted Gu Qingluan, attempting to persuade her. Dot Gu Qingluan remained composed and said, Let's not involve Hundred Herb Hall too deeply in this matter, to avoid Gu Zhicheng seeking revenge from you later. Upon hearing this, shopkeeper Wang was deeply touched. So, the master is doing this for the sake of Hundred Herb Hall and for me. Master, you need not go to such lengths. It is our honor to share the burden with you. The following day, as per Gu Qingluan's instructions, he personally delivered the Zhengshuan pill to the Gu residence. However, before reaching the Gu residence, he was suddenly struck unconscious, and the Zhengshuan pill hidden in his sleeve was stolen. With the Zhengshuan pill in his possession, Gu Zhicheng couldn't help but burst into laughter. Gu Qingluan, without the Zhengshuan pill, let's see how audacious you can be. I have never heard of the Zhengshuan pill. Did Gu Qingluan truly rely on it to enhance her cultivation? Wang Shi looked at the porcelain bottle in Gu Zhicheng's hand, unable to suppress her doubts. Narrow dot minded woman. There are many things you haven't heard of. The Zhengshuan pill is personally refined by the Lord of the Island of No Return. How can it be compared to ordinary pills in terms of effectiveness? Furthermore, if it weren't for the Zhengshuan pill, how could Gu Qingluan, a useless person, become so powerful? Gu Zhicheng retorted. Wang Shi was at a loss for words. Five years ago, Gu Qingluan was a cultivational cripple. 
If someone were to claim that she had reached the heavenly realm through talent alone within five years, Wang Shi wouldn't believe it either. Even the most talented individuals in Cloud Plains continent couldn't cultivate at such a monstrous speed. Regardless of whether the Zhengshuan pill is as extraordinary as you claim, at the very least, it is crucial for Gu Qingyuan. Now that she has lost this reliance, is there any need for me to continue to tolerate and swallow my pride? Gu Zhicheng walked straight towards the exit. Where is Gu Qingyuan? Chapter 44 44, Falling and Eating Dirt You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 44 Falling and Eating Dirt Translator Dragon Boat Translation Editor Dragon Boat Translation Upon learning that Gu Qingyuan was currently in the backyard, Gu Zhicheng gathered a group of people and confidently marched towards her. The news reached Ying Chun Garden, and Gu Xir exclaimed with excitement, Father must be going to confront that useless person. Let's go and see. After a brief hesitation, Gu Qinar decided to join them as well. Led by Gu Zhicheng, the group forcefully entered the garden. But as soon as they laid eyes on Gu Qingyuan sitting by the lake, legs crossed and casually munching on melon seeds, their faces froze in disbelief. It was nothing like the dramatic confrontation they had imagined. Unaware that the Zhengshuan pill had been intercepted, Gu Qingyuan displayed an air of arrogance and composure. Thinking he had discovered the cause, Gu Zhicheng stepped forward and angrily berated, You insolent brat! Show respect when you encounter your elders. Elders! You too, Gu Qingyuan glanced at the couple, her smile filled with derision. Are you even worthy? Today, I will make you understand that I will always be your father. As he spoke, a radiant light flickered in Gu Zhicheng's palm, and his robes fluttered without any apparent wind. In an instant, a menacing aura emanated from him. Without hesitation, he propelled himself forward like an arrow, swiftly charging towards Gu Qingyuan. The onlookers were captivated by the lightning dot fast movement, their hearts pounding with anticipation. Gu Qinar, hidden behind a rock, clenched her fists in excitement, whispering, teach her a lesson she won't forget. But while others perceived the scene as a blur of motion, Gu Qingyuan saw everything in slow motion. With a graceful spin, she effortlessly soared into the air, her skirt billowing elegantly. Boom! The stone bench was blown into pieces by the mystic force. Seeing Gu Qingyuan escape the calamity, Wang Shi and the others felt it was a pity. Gu Qingyuan landed lightly on the ground. When Gu Zhicheng attacked again, she suddenly flashed and disappeared. Gu Zhicheng knew that this was not good. He was extremely tense. Sensing the profound energy fluctuations coming from behind him, he quickly dodged. A powerful force hit his butt. Bang! Gu Zhicheng fell on his face. The Gu family members and servants who were waiting for the master to show his might were stunned. Why is the Gu family head bowing to me like this? A teasing female voice came from above. Gu Zhicheng, who was a little confused, raised his head when he heard that. First, he saw a pair of white boots, then a snow dot white dress, and then a smiling face. And at this moment, he was prostrating himself. Gu Qingyuan's words made it seem like he was giving her a big bow. Gu Zhicheng's face contorted in an instant. How preposterous! This audacious girl dared to insult him, her supposed father. Gu Zhicheng bounced up from the ground and fixed a malicious stare upon Gu Qingyuan. Did she think lowly of him just because he didn't show her what he was capable of? He pulled out a Zhengshuan pill from his pocket, releasing a dense spiritual aura and fragrant scent that permeated the air. A Zhengshuan pill. Gu Qingyuan's eyes widened abruptly, feigning astonishment as she exclaimed, How did you get a Zhengshuan pill? Gu Zhicheng laughed triumphantly, You have good eyesight, recognizing it at a glance. I bet you've been indulging in this thing, haven't you? You worthless fool. If it weren't for relying on the Zhengshuan pill, how could you ever match up to me? Once I take this Zhengshuan pill, do you think you can still defeat me? Eat it. I never touched this thing, 
Gu Qingwan furrowed her brows. Gu Zhiqing refused to believe her words, convinced that she was trying to prevent him from consuming the Xingxuan pill. His expression grew even more arrogant, his eyes brimming with greed. Are you scared now, you wretched girl? If you kneel down and kowtow to me ten times, no, a hundred times. And if you reveal the secrets of your cultivation, I might spare your life. Chapter 45 45. Embrace your kneeling, and do it with gusto you are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 45 Embrace your kneeling, and do it with gusto translator. Dragon Boat Translation Editor Dragon Boat Translation Gu Qingwan lowered her gaze, hiding her emotions behind her long and thick eyelashes. Spare my life. In the future, you must obey my every command. If I tell you to go east, you must never go west. Gu Zhiqing's tone softened slightly. After all, you are my daughter. If you obediently follow my instructions, I may show leniency for the mistakes you have made. Father, that's not fair. Gu Xie'er couldn't contain herself and rushed forward. Father, Gu Qingwan has made numerous mistakes. We can't forgive her so easily. Gu Qin'er couldn't stop her and let out a sigh, hiding herself more discreetly behind the artificial mountain. Gu Qingwan burst into laughter. What's so funny? Gu Xie'er glared at her with resentment. If looks could kill, Gu Qingwan would have been dead a thousand times over. Her gaze casually swept across Gu Xie'er's face. The ugly crown is acting like a fool, how amusing. Although Gu Xie'er's injuries were healing rapidly, there were still visible scars on her face. This remark was a blatant mockery. It struck at the core of Gu Xie'er's heart. Her anger twisted her face, making her appear even more ferocious. You despicable person. Gu Xie'er maintained a trace of composure and turned to Gu Zhiqin, using a coquettish tone. Father, look at her. She shows no remorse. You mustn't easily forgive her. She needs to face greater hardships to truly learn her lesson. Gu Zhiqing's face darkened as he scolded, Gu Qingwan, how dare you speak of your younger sister like that. Apologize to her immediately. Gu Xie'er looked smugly at her. Did you hear that? Apologize to me. I want you to kneel down and apologize. If you enjoy kneeling, then kneel with gusto. With a clear flick of his finger, a sharp chi blade shot out, finding its mark on Gu Seer's knees. She cried out in pain as her legs gave way uncontrollably, tears streaming down her face. You wicked child! How dare you harm your younger sister! If I don't teach you a lesson today, I won't stand for it. Gu Zhiqing's anger burned hot, his face flushed with indignation at her audacious act of attacking him directly. He prepared to consume the Xingxuan pill. Bedo Darem, I advise you against eating it, or you will regret it, Gu Qingwan nonchalantly twirled her fingers through her hair, her words carrying a weighty implication. Thinking she was afraid, Gu Zhiqing let out a scornful laugh. Without hesitation, he swallowed the Xingxuan pill. In an instant, a surge of energy spread outwards. Gu Zhiqing believed the medicine was taking effect, his eyebrows relaxing as he activated his profound power. Puff. A loud noise erupted, filling the air with a putrid stench. Everyone's expressions changed, hastily covering their noses as they retreated in horror. Having anticipated this, Gu Qingwan had already flown far away. It stinks. So foul. Goodness. How can it be so repulsive? It seems, it seems like the Lord farted. Gu Zhicheng, enveloped in the foul odor, turned pale, and upon hearing their discussions, he was consumed with anger, almost passing out from fury. Silence. At Gu Zhicheng's roar, everyone fell into a frightening silence. Pfft. However, at that moment, laughter erupted from someone. Due to the eerie silence surrounding them, the laughter sounded particularly jarring. Gu Zhicheng immediately turned his head, his eyes piercing like daggers at the source of the laughter. Gu Qingwan. Shut up. 
no laughing aloud. Just as he finished speaking, another pfft sound reverberated, and the foul odor permeated the air once more. Those closer to the source turned pale, their discomfort evident, yet they restrained their reactions, their faces reddening from the effort of suppressing their repulsion. Gu Zhicheng's face darkened like coal. Old master, did you consume something contaminated? Wang Shi asked cautiously. What kind of food could produce such a repugnant stench? It was toxic. Wait a minute, the Zhengshuan pill he had just swallowed. Chapter 46 46, Indeed a Beast You Are Listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 46 Indeed a Beast Translator Dragon Boat Translation Editor Dragon Boat Translation His cultivation hadn't advanced. Could it be that the Zhengshuan pill was a fake? The thought crossed Gu Zhicheng's mind, instantly filling him with anger. He angrily pointed at Gu Qingwan and accused, Are you the one behind this trickery? Gu Qingwan innocently blinked her eyes and replied, Trickery. I merely advised you not to eat it earlier. I knew you would regret it, but Lord Gu refused to listen and insisted on consuming it. There was nothing I could do. Who would believe her words? They would only assume she was afraid of him consuming it. So, the Zhengshuan pill is fake. While I don't know where you obtained this Zhengshuan pill, judging by its potency, it shouldn't be fake. After all, the Zhengshuan pill is meant for aiding the bowel movements and intestinal cleansing of spirit beasts. Until now, no one has ever heard of humans consuming it. Now we finally know the reaction when a human ingests it, Gu Qingwan said with a mischievous smile. Spirit, meant for the consumption of spirit beasts. So, it was actually intended for spirit beasts. Gu Zhicheng was seething with anger. Ah, I never expected Lord Gu to have such peculiar tastes, actually enjoying something intended for spirit beasts. Truly a beast, she sighed, birds of a feather flock together. I better leave this place quickly before I become assimilated. With a disgusted expression, she tiptoed and flew out of the garden. Don't you dare leave. Gu Zhicheng was furious, activating although Gu Qingwan had anticipated the consequences and kept her distance after Gu Zhicheng consumed the Zhengshuan pill, she couldn't shake off the lingering unease in her heart. Dot upon returning to Shallow Cloud residence, she immediately had hot water prepared for a bath, and changed her clothes. Qianxi went off to observe the commotion. After some time, Qianxi returned and enthusiastically described the scene to Gu Qingwan, saying, Gu family master went to the outhouse more than ten times. I heard that he was completely exhausted. And nobody dared to go near the outhouse. It was so disgustingly smelly. Gu Qingwan couldn't help but inwardly sneer. Xiao Nan's one excretion for a thousand miles was truly effective, but it was unfortunate that others were affected and had to suffer from the foul odor. Thankfully, she had foreseen this and led everyone to the garden. If this had happened at Shallow Cloud Residence, she would never dare to stay there again. The power of one excretion for a thousand miles was tremendous. She decided to wait until the next day when the smell had dispersed before dealing with them. Go. Fetch the shopkeeper from the Hundred Herb Hall for me. Exhausted, Gu Zhicheng shouted angrily while lying on the bed. A repugnant stench filled the air. Wang Shi, enduring her discomfort, stood inside the room and asked, Master, you knocked out the shopkeeper from the Hundred Herb Hall and took the pill from him. Why do you want him here? Gu Zhicheng was momentarily speechless. Wang Shi let out a sigh, ultimately, the root of this problem lies with Qing Wan. She must have deliberately led you to Hundred Herb Hall, making you believe that the Zhengshuan pill could enhance your cultivation. We should focus on teaching her a lesson. We must not offend Hundred Herb Hall, considering that they have the backing of Harmony Isle. Filled with hatred, Gu Zhicheng gritted his teeth, that wretched creature. Ever since her return, my life has been nothing but misery. Wang Shi's eyes carried a hint of amusement, but her face betrayed her concern, one can't fathom where she acquired such skills. 
if we continue to let her go unchecked, we will all be driven out. At that point, the entire Tianjin city will mock us, and even Shuer will likely suffer the consequences. Gu Zhicheng's eyebrows furrowed tightly. While he had already suffered a loss of face, Shuer was different. Her future was promising, and there must not be even the slightest blemish on her reputation. If we can't confront this openly, then we will resort to covert methods. I refuse to believe that we can't handle this wretched girl. Chapter 47 47, Assassination You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 47 Assassination Translator Dragon Boat Translation Editor Dragon Boat Translation That night, feeling tired from reading, Gu Qingwan extinguished the light and went to sleep. Several sneaky figures quietly infiltrated shallow cloud residence. As Gu Qingwan lay on the bed, she suddenly opened her eyes, alert and vigilant someone had triggered the barrier she had set in the courtyard. Swiftly, she got up, concealing a pillow beneath the covers to create the illusion of a sleeping person. With a nimble leap, she landed on the room's rafters. A bamboo pipe was inserted into the room, and white smoke billowed in. After a moment, the door was pried open. Silently, like ghosts, the black dot-clad intruders slipped into the room. One of them headed straight for the bed, raising a long sword and thrusting it into the blanket. As soon as the sword pierced through, the black dot-clad intruder sensed something was wrong. And at that moment, a gust of wind swept in. The black dot-clad intruder was startled and drew the sword to strike behind. A hand grabbed his neck and twisted it effortlessly. The eyes of the black dot-clad intruder bulged, his head tilting to the side. The other black dot-clad individuals were also alarmed and instinctively raised their swords to attack the person who killed their comrade. Gu Qingwan grabbed the sword of the dead intruder and swiftly plunged into the midst of the enemies. Gathering her profound power, she infused it into the sword. In the dark night, the sword gleamed like lightning, swiftly moving through the air. The assassins were horrified and had the intention to retreat. Unfortunately, their lives would all end here tonight. After a moment, all seven individuals had perished, not a single one left alive. Master, what happened here? Hearing the commotion, Su Lai hurriedly arrived. A trace of profound power formed at her fingertips, flicking towards the candlestick. Puff. Dot the candlelight illuminated the room, revealing everything clearly to Su Lai. Seeing the seven black dot clad corpses strewn on the ground, Su Lai's brows furrowed. L arrived late, and I apologize for the disturbance, master. The mere assassins wouldn't be enough to frighten their master. However, the fact that they had disturbed their master's rest was a failure on Su Lai's part. These individuals are all experts at the heavenly stage, skilled at concealing their presence. It's normal that you didn't notice, Gu Qingwan said calmly. Although she didn't blame him, Su Lai still felt remorseful. I will investigate and find out who hired these assassins, to give you an explanation, master. No need. I already know who it is. Is it someone from the Gu family? Su Lai asked. Gu Qingwan nodded. It wasn't difficult to guess. She had anticipated that the Gu family would make a move, but they acted even faster than she had expected. However, did they really think hiring a few heavenly stage assassins could solve the problem with her? That was too naive. Su Lai exclaimed angrily, I'll go and settle the score with them. No need to rush. Gu Qingwan smiled, a hint of mischief in her expression under the dim, yellow light. She then went to rest in the adjacent guest room, while Su Lai called someone to clean up the room. Rongda Hall. Neither Gu Zhicheng nor Wang Shi had been able to sleep. They were anxiously waiting in the study, hoping for any news from the hired assassins, but the silence was deafening. There was no sign of any progress, and shallow cloud residents remained eerily quiet. As time passed, their initial anticipation slowly turned into growing unease and apprehension. They both knew deep down that the mission had likely failed. 
Wang Shi attempted to comfort Gu Zhicheng, trying to find reassurance in their anonymity. The assassins are unaware of our true identities. Even if they have failed, Gu Qingwan has no way of tracing it back to us. Although her words held some logic, Gu Zhicheng couldn't suppress his frustration. They have jeopardized their own reputation while attempting to tarnish ours. Go back to your quarters. Wang Shi couldn't hide her restlessness. I can't sleep. Tomorrow is already the third day. If Gu Qingwan is still alive, do we really have to retreat in shame? Her frustration and unwillingness were palpable. Being suppressed by that worthless girl for fifteen years, it was unbearable to see her now in a position of power, abusing her authority. It infuriated Wang Shi to no end. Retreat. She must be delusional. Gu Zhicheng's anger reverberated as he pounded his hand on the table. Witnessing his intense reaction, Wang Shi hesitated but couldn't contain her curiosity. Old master, where are you going? To seek outside assistance. In the Chenyuan kingdom, heavenly stage experts were highly regarded as top dot tier fighters. However, within the heavenly stage, there were nine levels of power, each representing a significant leap in strength. Gu Zhichen was at the fourth level, but the fact that he couldn't overcome Gu Qingwan meant that her abilities surpassed the fourth level. Initially, Gu Zhicheng had wanted to avoid exposing their family's disgrace, but now he had reached a breaking point and could no longer consider the consequences. Chapter 48 48, Kidnapping the Beautiful Sister Back Home You Are Listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 48 Kidnapping the Beautiful Sister Back Home Translator Dragon Boat Translation Editor Dragon Boat Translation Inside the Palace Mr. Lan, I have good news for you. Mr. Lu has agreed to meet us. Qi Tianyu excitedly shared the news with Feng Tianlan. Feng Tianlan's eyes flickered with interest. When? Today, in the morning. Get ready, we'll go there right away. After a while, there was no sound outside the room. Inside the room, Feng Yuanxi sat up from the bed, his big eyes sparkling. His delicate and beautiful face was irresistibly adorable. Dot if Gu Qingwan were here right now, she would be extremely shocked. Because this face looked almost identical to her son, Gu Xiaonan. Feng Yuanxi jumped off the bed and ran to the door, shouting, Oh, Uncle Jing Feng, my stomach hurts. Jing Feng, who was guarding the door, was startled by the words and immediately unlocked and broke open the door. Young master, you, young master, you, a strong gust of wind struck, startling Jing Feng. Oh no. It was a trap. He quickly turned around. Powder was scattered on his face. Jing Feng instinctively closed his eyes. Whoosh. A dark figure shot towards him and bit his neck. Jing Feng endured the pain and opened his eyes to grab the little figure trying to escape. Young master, don't run, the toxin quickly took effect in his body. He took two steps forward, his vision went dark, and his body uncontrollably collapsed to the ground. Xiaohe, well done. Feng Yuanxi touched the head of the small black snake. Hiss, hiss. Xiaohe bumped its head against his hand, and its sharp tail curled up happily. Looking at the unconscious Jing Feng on the ground, Feng Yu and she clasped his hands together apologetically. Uncle Jing Feng, I'm sorry. Please rest well in the room. I'll come back early. He laboriously moved Jing Feng into the room, closed the door, and happily ran outside. Huh, beautiful sister, I'm coming to find you. It had been two days since he last saw his beautiful sister. He wondered if she still remembered him. Feng Yu and she didn't know where Jun Mansion was and looked a bit lost on the streets. After a while, he found a passerby to ask for directions. The passerby, charmed by his cuteness, enthusiastically pointed him in the right direction. In the end, a kind dot hearted girl, who was afraid that he would get lost, personally accompanied him until they reached the outside of Jun Mansion. Thank you, sister. I've arrived. 
Go about your business, and if we're destined, we'll meet again. Feng Yuanxi waved his little hand to bid farewell to the kind-hearted girl, gazing at the majestic words, June Mansion, on the closed gate. Suddenly, he slapped his forehead. Oh no, he came in such a hurry and forgot to prepare a gift for his beautiful sister. If he went to prepare now, it would take a long time before he could see the beautiful sister. After hesitating for a moment, Feng Yuanxi dismissed that plan. Why not just kidnap his beautiful sister and bring her home? After all, his father wasn't around, and there were plenty of treasures in the palace for his sister to choose from. Hmm, there must be something that the beautiful sister would like. Thinking about the countless treasures sent by the royal family of Cheng Yuan Kingdom to the palace, Feng Yuanxi instantly came up with an idea. As a polite and well-behaved child, Feng Yuanxi believed that on his first visit, he should leave a good impression on his beautiful sister. He straightened his clothes and approached the front gate, knocking on it. No one responded. Ha! Huh. Was his voice too soft? Feng Yuanxi knocked harder three times. The gate remained tightly closed. Were all the people inside asleep? Feng Yuanxi scratched his head. No choice, he would have to take an unconventional approach. The first rays of sunlight broke through the clouds and illuminated the land in the early morning. Gu Qingwan leisurely had her breakfast and then walked towards Rongda Hall. Qian Qi and Suliai followed behind her. Both of them were full of anticipation and excitement for what was about to happen, their faces beaming. Gu Zhicheng and Wang Shi, who had endured a sleepless night, emerged from their quarters upon learning of Gu Qingwan's arrival. They were joined by a retinue of servants as they confronted her. Why have you come at such an early hour? Gu Zhicheng inquired with a touch of annoyance. Chapter 49 49, Gu Qingwan died five years ago. You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 49 Gu Qingwan died five years ago. Translator Dragon Boat Translation Editor Dragon Boat Translation has the head of the Gu family forgotten. The three-day deadline is up, Gu Qingwan reminded. Gu Zhicheng snorted dismissively. What three-day deadline? It seems that with age, the head of the Gu family has become forgetful, Gu Qingwan chuckled lightly. Su Lai, please remind him. Stepping forward, Su Lai spoke. Head of the Gu family, Today is the day you were supposed to vacate June Mansion. If you need assistance, my comrades can lend a hand. This is the Gu family. Who are you to tell us to leave? We won't budge. Gu Zhichen retorted, wearing an unyielding expression. Anticipating their resistance, Gu Qingwan had exhausted her patience over the course of three days. Su Lai, take action, she commanded firmly. Yes. Su Lai nodded and gestured, prompting dozens of subordinates to charge towards Rongda Hall. How dare you! Get out of here! Gu Zhicheng saw the approaching figures and waved his sleeve in a dismissive manner. A surge of profound power rippled outward, creating waves like the sea. The henchmen leaped to avoid the force and swiftly vaulted over the courtyard gate, breaching the walls. Observing Gu Qingwan audaciously sending people to invade the courtyard, Gu Zhicheng seethed with anger, his whiskers trembling. You insolent girl! Since you insist on defying me, don't expect me to show any familial mercy. He turned to the middle-aged man standing beside him and respectfully bowed. Brotherly, I apologize for this situation. I ask for your help in dealing with this disobedient girl. Gu Qingwan had just noticed the presence of the middle-aged man by Gu Zhicheng's side. His eyes emanated a sharp yet restrained gaze, dressed in a simple black robe. His face exhibited determination, and a compelling aura surrounded him. Surname Li. Could it be Li Tianhao, the current head of the Li family? Recalling her memories, Gu Qingwan confirmed his identity as Li Tianhao. She smiled softly. This is a private dispute between the Gu and Jun families. Head of the Li family, are you truly determined to intervene? 
Li Tianhao calmly regarded her. The Gu and Li families have had a long dot standing friendship, and you and I can be considered as uncle and niece. Allow me to advise you to show mercy when given the chance. The blood of the Gu family runs through your veins, an unchangeable fact. Despite any grudges or enmity, we are still family. Why create unnecessary hostility and provide outsiders with amusement? Gu Qingwan died five years ago. Gu Qingwan smiled coldly. The people present did not understand what she meant and thought that she had been heartbroken back then. Is there no room for negotiation? Li Tianhao asked. If the head of the Li family leaves now, I will still address you as Uncle Li when we meet in the future. Otherwise, we will be enemies. Gu Qingwan declared. Li Tianhao let out a soft sigh. So stubborn. Gritting his teeth, Gu Zhicheng said, Li, stop wasting your words on her. I have tried to reason with her and appeal to her emotions multiple times in the past few days, as you have witnessed. No matter how much I say, it's just a waste of breath. Li Tianhao walked to the bottom of the steps. I'll give you three moves. Gu Qingwan raised an eyebrow. Thank you, Lord Li. Without hesitation, she made her move since he had offered. Li Tianhao's expression slightly tensed. In a battle between masters, the true extent of their skills becomes evident. Initially thinking that Gu Zhicheng's description was exaggerated, Li Tianhao had to admit that Gu Qingwan was indeed formidable. He realized that he needed to be careful, a slight oversight could lead to his defeat. Dot bang. Li Tianhao intercepted Gu Qingwan's hand. One move. Lord Li, you truly live up to being an expert in the ninth stage of the heavenly realm. Much stronger than someone here, Gu Qingwan lightly implied, casting a meaningful glance at a certain man beside her. Gu Zhicheng understood the underlying meaning of her words, and his face immediately darkened. Li Tianhao replied, You are also impressive. His ninth stage of the heavenly realm cultivation was no secret, so he wasn't surprised when Gu Qingwan mentioned it. Prepare yourself, Lord Li. Gu Qingwan smiled faintly. Her fist clenched as she aimed for Li Tianhao's face. Her punch was unstoppable. The sound of air being shattered caused Li Tianhao's expression to change. You, he swiftly evaded. A strand of his hair was swept away by the force of her punch, instantly severed into two pieces. You are also an expert in the ninth stage of the heavenly realm. Li Tianhao landed not far away. His eyes filled with astonishment as he looked at Gu Qingwan. Chapter 50 50, Regretting to the Core You Are Listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 50 Regretting to the Core Translator Dragon Boat Translation Editor Dragon Boat Translation The power in that punch just now was enough to match his own. What? Ninth Stage of the Heavenly Realm Gu Zhicheng and the others watching on were all shocked. After reaching the Heavenly Realm, each subsequent stage represents a substantial gap, particularly beyond the sixth stage where the disparity becomes significant. Some people remain stuck at a certain stage for years without being able to advance. It was not that they lack talent, as every cultivator who can reach the heavenly realm had exceptional talent. But even those with great talent in cultivation often get stuck at a certain stage without any progress. For example, if there were 1,000 heavenly realm experts in the country of Cheng Yuan, 70% would be below the fourth stage, while the fourth to sixth stages would account for 25% and only 5% would be above the 6th stage. And within this 5%, the higher the stage, the fewer the number of people. In the entire country of Cheng Yuan, there are only 10 known experts at the ninth stage of the heavenly realm. Among these 10, Li Tianhao was the second youngest. The youngest one was already in his 30s. And Gu Qingwan was not even 20.1 years old yet. More importantly, just five years ago, she was a powerless waste. In a span of over five years, she transformed from a waste into a respected ninth-stage heavenly realm expert. How is that possible? 
Gu Qingwan shook her head, you're mistaken. Everyone let out a sigh of relief. That was what they thought. How could she possibly be at the ninth stage of the heavenly realm? If she were at that level, it would be unbearable for anyone. They would start doubting their own lives. Li Tianhao was taken aback. Engaging in direct combat with Gu Qingwan allowed him to truly feel her strength. If she wasn't at the ninth stage of the heavenly realm, then could she be? The saint realm, he exclaimed. Everyone else was utterly shocked by his proclaim. It's impossible. Absolutely impossible. Gu Zhicheng and Wang Shi vehemently denied it. They couldn't accept the idea of Gu Qingwan being at the ninth stage of the heavenly realm, let alone being a saint. Even their proudest daughter had only reached the heavenly realm. If Gu Qingwan truly was a divine realm powerhouse, then they were finished. Dot, that's not the case, Gu Qingwan denied. Before everyone could relax, she smirked, I'm just at the peak of the ninth stage of the heavenly realm. Thud. Wang Shi's legs gave way, and she sank to the ground. Gu Zhicheng visibly staggered. The peak of the ninth stage of the heavenly realm. With just one opportunity, she could ascend to the saint realm. She was once their daughter, someone who could have brought glory to the Gu family. But now, they had become enemies. Instead of supporting the Gu family, she had become a weapon aimed at them. At that moment, regret overwhelmed Gu Zhicheng's heart. If only he had known, if only he hadn't acted so ruthlessly. Gu Qingluan's gaze turned icy as she scanned the Gu couple, finally resting on the face of Li Tianhao. Lord Li, do you still wish to fight? Yes. Li Tianhao's expression was still calm. Your cultivation is indeed high, but you're still young and inexperienced. If we really fight, it's not certain who will win. Then let's fight. Gu Qingluan stood her ground, exuding an air of calmness and composure. The gentle morning breeze blew, causing her flowing white garments to flutter, while her fair and delicate face radiated an ethereal charm. Li Tianhao, unable to contain his impatience any longer, made the first move. The earlier proposition of three moves had become nothing but a mere jest. It remained uncertain whether giving their all would be sufficient to overcome their opponent. Li Tianhao was skilled in the art of spear techniques. Little did he expect that one day he would be compelled to resort to using a weapon against a younger opponent. As he closed in on Gu Qingluan, a long spear appeared in his grasp. The Blazing Flame Spear Wang Shi exclaimed upon catching sight of the weapon, a glimmer of hope lighting up her eyes. The Blazing Flame Spear was renowned for its ability to sweep aside all obstacles in its path. A tinge of admiration flickered in Gu Qingluan's eyes. So, this is the legendary Blazing Flame Spear. 